Are we rolling? We're rolling. We're rolling. Noodles. Hey everyone, I'm Veronica Spera. I'm a New York based food stylist currently staying in Boulder, Colorado. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make four shapes of pasta from one type of dough. I'm gonna show you how to make loraguitas, orchette, cavatelli, and caputi. This is super simple, requires no machinery. Later on, I'm gonna make a really bright, refreshing pasta salad with one of the four shapes. I hope you guys stick around to enjoy this beautiful summery day with me. about to get into my dough making. I've got my semolina flour here and some double zero. Semolina is a type of flour. It's made from durum wheat. It's used much more frequently in southern styles of pasta. Any spaghetti or macaroni that you buy in a box at the store is going to be made with semolina and water. The other flour that I'm using is double zero. This is just a more refined white flour like an all-purpose but the grain is finer so it makes for a much softer dough. The recipe that I'm making today I'm using equal parts of these two flours but you can even make all four of these types of pasta with only semolina and water which is like probably even more traditional. Nobody get mad at me, but I like the addition of double zero because I think it does add that lusciousness that's paired nicely with that toothsome bite that we get from the semolina. I'm gonna mix this with a fork and I have a plastic bench scraper to assist me, but this isn't even necessary to have. I'm just gonna go ahead and get this out onto my cutting board. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by just using my bench scraper. You can use your hands. It is helpful to have a tool like this. You could always use a spatula or any flat surface. I'm gonna make a well in the center of my flour pile just by using my fingers to kind of push all the flour to the side. You want the walls of the well to be fairly even. If you notice any spots that are a bit thinner, you can just drag more to that area. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pour my one cup of water right in the middle. I'll use my fork to gradually pull in flour from all of the sides of the well. And then use the base of my fork to just kind of whisk a bit and evenly combine. It doesn't need to be fully smooth before you incorporate more flour. And if you notice a side that's thicker, bring in from there as opposed to the thinner side, again, to avoid that breakage. So at this point, it's formed this paste. So I'm comfortable just kind of using my bench scraper to gather the flour towards the center and just folding it all on itself. And I'll use my fingertips at this point to go under the pile and kind of fold up and in and start to sort of fold over and start kneading. So just using this portion of my palm to sort of put a decent amount of pressure you want the dough to be, you know, still springy when you press on it, but pretty firm to the touch. It gets a little vigorous here. <laughs> this is definitely a muscle building activity, guys. So we're gonna knead for about 10 minutes. Generally, people say, you know, 15 to 20. I think it depends on the specific dough that you're kneading. This one is already fairly hard. So I don't think it's going to need as much knead time. <laughs> Doesn't need the knead. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm getting a little windy <laughs> from the knead. <laughs> I've just gotten to the point where I feel like my dough does not need any more kneading. It's gotten pretty stiff, but still when poking it, it springs back. On the bottom side, there's some creases here. So I'm just gonna fold those in to prevent the dough from drying out at all when I wrap it. Okay, so now I'm ready to wrap this tightly in saran wrap. 
And I'm gonna let this rest at room temperature for about 20 minutes while I make my pesto. When I was in uh, pasta making school in Bologna, La Vecchia Scuola, my instructor, Alessandro Spizni, he, I messed up one of the tortelloni that I made. I made it too thick and he literally grabbed my pasta and yelled at me, Questa di merda! And he smashed it on the table and it exploded with cheese. And I think I cried. <laughs> So that was definitely the worst thing that's ever happened to me in my life. <laughs> so today I'm not really making a super traditional Ligurian style pesto. I'm more so trying just to focus on simplicity, utilizing everything that I have in my fridge. I've got tons of herbs in the garden. A friend gave me some chard and some arugula. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I want you to feel inspired to kind of use what you have around to make a green herbaceous sauce. Here are my chard stems. I'm just gonna lightly salt them, maybe like half a teaspoon of salt. And then I have some red wine vinegar. So just a little bit, maybe like a tablespoon. So I'm just about to blanch and shock my rainbow chard greens. I've got some boiling water that I'm going to sort of heavily salt. And then I have a bowl with an ice bath just right on the side. These will be a really quick blanch, about 30 seconds in the water. And they're good to go into their ice bath. The shocking is going to help tremendously with keeping that really bright green color that I really am striving for in this pesto. I'm just gonna go ahead and squeeze out any of the excess water. I'm gonna give my charred leaves a quick chop. So I've got two cups of parsley leaves in here and a cup of basil leaves and another cup of spicy arugula that I got from a friend's garden. I'm gonna zest one whole lemon into the Vitamix. I'm also gonna put the juice of one whole lemon. I'm just gonna put a few drops of cold water in as well to help get this blending. Every so often, push down on your greens. I'm gonna put another drop of water in there just to help ease this up a little bit. At this point, I'm gonna season my pesto. Two good pinches of salt, little black pepper, and I have about a quarter cup of Parmigiano Reggiano. And just for good measure, I'm gonna put a little bit more fat in here olive oil fat, <laughs> olive fat. I'm gonna set this aside in the fridge and then we're gonna get into our pasta making, pasta shaping. So the dough has really softened up significantly from before, but it still has a really nice consistency. It still has some structure, but is gonna be like pliable enough for me to play with and shape with. I'm gonna cut this into quarters for our four shapes. It's really important that you don't let your dough dry out. You'll notice that I'm consistently covering the dough with a towel throughout. The spray bottle helps significantly. Wood is so porous that like a little spritz of water on top is really helpful. The first pasta that I'm gonna make is the Loragitas, the Sardinian pasta that looks like iron rings. Each of these four shapes are gonna get rolled into a log, some thinner than others. This one is going to get rolled into about an eighth of an inch. So I'll just lift up this thinner end and use my pointer and my middle finger to wrap it around. So it's gonna wrap around my fingers twice and then you connect here and tear off. So I basically have two rings that cross in the front 
And then in the back, they're separated. And so start by holding it of the side of the log that is twisted and sort of just use your fingers to twist at both ends. This is what they should look like. Here I have a very lightly dusted sheet tray with semolina, but just a small dusting of semolina is great. Spritz. So now I'm moving into making orchette, which literally translates to little ears. And this is a pasta. <laughs> <laughs> from Puglia, where I did spend a little bit of time when I was traveling in Italy, when I was studying in Bologna. All of the streets there are just like lined with these little nonas spending all day making orchette. So same thing here, I'm gonna roll out the ball of dough, but not quite as thin as for the Loragitas but really depends on what size you want your orchette to be. These ones will be pretty tiny, like about the size of a dime. But if you wanna go bigger, just simply roll your log not as thin. I'll use a butter knife just to cut into half inch pieces. And this step isn't necessary, but I find that forming the pieces into little balls makes it a more uniform round shape. And you'll use a butter knife and gently push down on it and pull back. And then you pop it up with your thumb. It's the kind of thing that like seems sort of difficult at first, but just takes like a few times of just practicing and getting like those sort of angles right. So I've just made a handful of orchette, which are looking extra cute. Cavatelli is the third shape that I'm gonna show you how to make today. This literally translates to little caves. It's a very similar shape to Orchette. It's made very similarly and it's also from Puglia. I am gonna use that same log that I rolled out for Orchette for Cavatelli. I might make it a touch thinner. You put a little bit less pressure onto the piece of pasta than orchette. So this will be like a more gentle pull. Um, you're not like opening up the piece of dough as much. So it's just sort of like a little cave. So I'm about to go into our last shape, the shape that I'm gonna be making our pasta salad with, Capunti. These are also from Puglia, but I love them because they resemble little pea pods. And I just think they're perfect because they have these little divots to catch any bits and pieces that are in your sauce. This is just adorable. It's similarly rolled out. I'm actually gonna go about a quarter inch on these. So I'll make little indentations with my three fingers, ring, middle, and pointer, and just sort of pull along. This is the same dragging technique that you saw with your kette, just not using a knife. And so I'll give these just a further kind of pull to make those ridges that I've been mentioning, and then I pinch my ends and sort of give them a little twist. And in the end, I'll kind of manipulate just how it looks. They're just adorable. They're like little perfect cups for pesto or like little bathtubs. Tagliatella, tagliolini, tagliarin, pasta alla chitarra, bucatini, bigoli. Uh, tortellone, tortellini, cavatelli, peachy, stracciatelli, sfogliatelli, no, sfogliatelli, so pasta. I've just finished making all four of my shapes, which I'm gonna package up for some friends to give away. But I am gonna cook the capunti that I had made actually yesterday, and this is what's gonna be in our pasta salad. 
I'm gonna pretty heavily salt my water. The cook time will vary, but I would imagine they'll take about five minutes. While my pasta finishes up boiling, I'm gonna gather my pesto, my lemon zest, my parm, and my chard stems. I'm gonna take everything outside and we're gonna finish everything off there. So I've got my pasta here and this bright, bright pesto, which I'm really excited about. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take a few spoonfuls of it and gradually toss that on top. I'm gonna do a little bit at a time. I don't imagine that I'm gonna need all of that. This is already looking super bright green. And I have these cannellini beans that I cooked about two days ago. This is something that I love cooking pretty much every week. I'm gonna toss some of these beans right into the salad. I'll go ahead and get all of our pickled chard stems in there. This will add a nice vinegary kick. And then all of our lemon zest. This looks super refreshing. The pesto is really refreshing, as is the lemon zest. I'm gonna add just a little bit of maldin and some black pepper. Maybe just a touch of this vinegar that I had the chard stems in. <laughs> it's really good. I'm gonna wipe my face. <laughs> I'm so happy with how this dish turned out. The capunti was a perfect pasta to pair with the pesto. The little divots inside of the pasta are perfect vessels for the pesto and the beans. The lemon zest is really refreshing. I honestly feel like I'm having a summer meal in Italy again right now, and it's bringing me a lot of happiness. I really hope that you guys try this dish at home. Let me know in the comments how you guys like it. Um, I would also be thrilled if anybody wanted to try any of the other pasta shapes that we did today. Like and subscribe to the Food and Wine channel for more videos like this. I hope you guys enjoy the day.